I welcome all viewers to our broadcast today. I remind you that today is Tuesday, and on Tuesdays we discuss the basics of the Next Generation Airships project. I, Pavel Filipov, will be hosting today's show. Fedor Konstantinov was supposed to be with me, but unfortunately, he is currently on his way to the office and couldn't make it in time. What has he been doing? He was at the venue where our conference will soon take place on November 16th, where we will discuss the results of Solar Group, including the Next Generation Airships project. So, make sure to register. However, it's not guaranteed that you will be able to attend, as there are almost no spots left. In any case, you can still register in our personal account for now. And before we start our presentation, I urge you to like this broadcast and share it. Be sure to invite those who are not yet aware of what we are doing, who know nothing about the airship and nothing about the Solar Group company. Because as I said, the information today will primarily be for them. I will also answer your questions you can already write your questions on vcontact or YouTube and I will look at all of this at the end of the broadcast in about 40-50 minutes. I will get to the questions, but if you write now, I will just answer your question faster. Also, please note that only through the link you send to your friend can they access it even tomorrow because the recording will be available at the same link. So be sure to share this broadcast. But let's start from the very beginning. Before we begin discussing the project, I will tell you a little about who Solar Group is. Solar Group is a financial company. It is an investment platform that currently hosts several investment projects. We differentiate ourselves from other investment platforms by offering truly innovative projects. We seek projects that not only provide opportunities for people to earn, but also those that improve our lives and introduce innovations that enhance our daily existence. These are indeed large projects and we begin financing them at the venture stage. Therefore, those who participate in these projects can expect substantial profits in the event of success. We finance projects through private investors which is why we conduct such selections through collective investment methods known as crowdfunding. By visiting our platform, you can choose a project that interests you and invest in it. To date, we have over 500,000 registrations, more than 70,000 investors, and nearly $100,000 in investments have passed through our platform. Therefore, we have much to be very proud of. There is indeed a large community of people around us who are ready to invest in the projects we offer. Our first project, Sovelmash, is already in the final stages. We are all waiting together for the receipt of all documents that will confirm that we, as a company, have completed the construction. And it has indeed transformed from a construction project into a functioning business. This is expected to happen this year, it will be an enterprise focused on the production and operation of electric motors using the Slavyanka technology. This technology allows for more efficient engine design than what other companies achieve, as confirmed by both patents and research. However, there is also significant practical experience with this technology. At present, we will talk about our next second project, which was launched just a couple of months ago. Within this project, we plan to build flying vehicles such as airships, next generation airships, which are not the kind of airships most of you might imagine. We will use new technologies and new solutions while leveraging all the advantages of this type of transport. Moreover, we are also engaged in various ancillary directions, such as stratospheric vehicles, the first launch of which took place, by the way, this past Sunday. These flying vehicles allow us not only to refine the technologies that we will apply directly in the airships, but also to have an additional commercial direction that can also generate revenue. So let's start from the beginning. What is an airship in principle? And why have we become interested in this topic? Those who follow us know that we have approached this issue very carefully. What project do we have next? 
we selected a large number of projects and focused specifically on airships. The fact is that interest and the trend of airship development in the world is starting to grow in all countries. If you open the internet, you will see that almost in every country, various companies are building something in the field of airships, some in the stratosphere, some for cargo, some for rescue operations, but all of this indicates that there is interest and it is significant. The companies that are already represented in the market, such as the Zeppelin company, are making good profits by operating airships and are demonstrating that it is possible to earn substantial money from this which they are doing. When we began to familiarize ourselves with this topic, we discovered that our country has a very large potential for developing this direction. We have a strong airship school and we have many specialists, people who are generally interested in this topic and have connections to those who built airships, companies that launched and sold airships, for whom this is indeed a practical matter. It took quite a long time to gather this team. Now it is assembled and we are essentially in the office of the company Nova. We are located. This is the name of the company that will build airships. But what is the interest in this type of transport? An airship is the only known transport that does not attempt to violate the laws of physics. Rather, it flies thanks to them, so to speak, in fact, because it utilizes Archimedes' principle by filling the airship's envelope with gas. I want to point out that today helium is used instead of hydrogen, which was previously used as a fuel, making the airship completely safe. In this regard, it lifts the airship upwards along with all the cargo, passengers, or anything else we need. This turns out to be indeed extremely efficient. If we compare this with other flying vehicles, we will understand that they can perform a large number of the same tasks, but at a much lower cost. There are also a number of unique tasks that only airships can solve, and today's flying transport cannot do this. So. Let's go in order. What types of airships are there? What are their purposes? If we talk about small devices, yes, an airship can be just a few meters long, for example, 10 to 20 meters, which is still considered a small device. It can carry a payload of 500 kilograms, 1,000 tons, or even 2,000 tons, and can perform a variety of tasks. These include transporting a limited number of passengers, such as in tourist applications, which many are currently using, as well as various options where drones, including unmanned ones, are utilized. This includes observation and data collection for weather monitoring. In general, you can equip an airship with any equipment, and it can be used effectively. The main advantage of an airship is that it can remain in the air, so to speak, for free, without expending any effort. You can stay over a particular object or area of activity for months, monitoring what is happening and observing the situation. Of course, this can also be used for military purposes. Overall, there is a fairly wide range of applications. If we consider slightly larger vehicles, there are some very understandable options for us. For example, the use of airships in various rescue operations in hard-to-reach places this includes transporting a larger number of passengers for both tourism and passenger purposes, which is also not excluded. Yes, if we talk about long flights, an airship flies slower than an airplane, but if we want to take off comfortably, or if we are flying not a long distance between cities, right? As an analogy to small aviation, the speeds of airships at 100 to 200 kilometers per hour are more than sufficient especially since they fly in a straight line. If we compare it to trains, cars, or even small airplanes, it turns out to be about the same, just faster, cheaper, and more comfortable. Of course, this is indeed cargo transportation. And if we compare this with similar models, for example, the MI-8 helicopters, which are among the most popular helicopters in the world, the cost of cargo transportation is significantly reduced here. We have these calculations and we will definitely show them to you. 
if we look at all other options, there are countless ways they can be used. This includes transporting equipment, various medications, and reaching hard to access areas as is currently done in Africa. There are also military purposes. If we take a large airship, an extremely large one, we have the opportunity to design stratospheric vehicles that will operate in the stratosphere and replace satellites. Again, this is much more efficient in many cases. Moreover, they can be used to launch rockets, replacing several platforms by simply lifting the rocket up. Then it can launch from the airship or from such a stratosphere to the platforms. This is largely why we are currently working on northern vehicles, as these are the first steps directly in this direction. Speaking of more futuristic options, which most likely will not be as widespread as passenger cargo or tourist airships, they will still surely find their clientele. These options include, for example, a flying hotel, a flying clinic, and various flying casinos. There was a proposal to create a flying registry office so that people could get married in the skies. In general, there are many such tourist options. This is certainly not even the most futuristic option. And the question is how futuristic indeed they really are. For example, Amazon has a concept of an airship. It's essentially a warehouse hanging over the city, right? Where the goods needed for delivery are located. If you order toothpaste through an app or a computer, the item is taken from this large airship and delivered on a small airship or drones descend to your apartment. It's like a flying warehouse. It always hovers over the city. Why is this needed? First of all, it's more economically viable. Secondly, it's faster, more technological, and more mobile. In general, there are a huge number of various advantages that this can provide. So let's see when Amazon will implement a similar option. I'm sure it will happen over time. But this is a complex project, as complex as building an airship with a carrying capacity of 500 tons. It cannot be said that it is impossible. However, some companies are currently unable to achieve this. We believe their mistake is that they want to create a 500 ton airship right away. When you want to do it, that's commendable. But first, at least build one for 1,000 tons. Show that you can practice and refine the technologies. Because even this time, when launching the atmospheric vehicle, we have drawn a very large number of technologies that we will then need directly in the construction of next generation airships. Uh, speaking about other countries, I have already mentioned before quite a lot in various sectors. Many companies are developing them, including Sergey Brin, co-owner of Google, who is making his airship for rescue operations. The Chinese are actively developing them right now and initiatives. In America, there are quite a few different various projects and startups and endeavors. I recently read some interesting information that one of the companies will be making stratospheric devices so that they can stay in the sky for a long time and stay operational and provide communication. The internet is a great opportunity indeed for airships to manifest themselves in this way because as I mentioned before, an airship can stay in the air practically for free for as long as needed and efficiently and of course in terms of cost it turns out to be much cheaper than satellites, right? Moreover, to launch satellites you need a rocket and a lot of other things. Here we have an airship that simply takes off, hovers, and stays at the height you need, allowing you to do what you need up there. Therefore, in this regard, it is certainly much more feasible. And if we talk about what we will do, yes, let me explain this in more detail. We want to create a fairly large project, a big company, within which we will design six types of aircraft that are already known at this point. Uh... These aircraft include commercial jets, private planes, cargo carriers, military aircraft, drones, and experimental models. Each type of aircraft will have unique features and capabilities tailored to specific market needs. These are only the aircraft that we plan to design within the project, or rather within the company, and produce them serially. However, this is a distance of five to ten years.
Therefore, if we take our investment project together with investors, we want to take the first step. Within our large global company, we need to make the first clear, profitable step by obtaining the aircraft that we can design, develop and produce serially and on which we can earn money to build the third, fourth and fifth types of aircraft. To make this first step, the amount required for such a project is $100,000, which we plan to attract over three to five years. This investment will be strategically allocated to research and development, production facilities, and marketing efforts to ensure the project's success. And we are confident that we will succeed. Our confidence stems from our experienced team, innovative designs, and strong market demand for advanced aircraft solutions. Now let's look at what exactly we want to do what assets will be created within the project, and most importantly, how we plan to earn money on all of this. We aim to generate revenue through the sale of aircraft, maintenance services, and potential partnerships with other aerospace companies. Let me go to the board. I will draw a small diagram for you and explain everything point by point in a detailed manner. Specifically, we want to do the following. We want to create a comprehensive and innovative design bureau where next generation airships will be meticulously designed, where the talented and skilled designers will be strategically located, and where the main team of dedicated and experienced people working on this ambitious project for the company will be based. This design bureau will serve as the central hub of creativity and innovation, fostering collaboration and ensuring the seamless integration of ideas ideas and technologies. We can confidently say that this will be the brain, the core intellectual center that will handle and oversee this groundbreaking project, ensuring its success and advancement. Next, we need land that will have the suitable and necessary licenses and permits. On this land, we plan to place two hangars and facilities. A hangar is a building where airships are assembled, serviced and produced and efficiently in series. We also want to establish our own production. And within this production, we will create various critical and essential components so that we do not outsource everything. Because you see, it would probably be pointless to try to make each and every single screw and each and every part ourselves to assemble an aircraft. We have a very large and renowned engineering school in the country with companies that specialize and are highly specialized in various fields companies and institutes from which we will order certain and innovative developments or solutions. For example, we are currently actively working with Bauman and will soon start collaborating with MAI, the Moscow Aviation Institute, and other companies assisting us. However, we will produce some things ourselves, becoming our intellectual property to ensure no one can copy what we are doing. Of course, we will need to create a school where we will train pilots, crew and engineers who will service these airships. This is also quite important. But let me draw a detailed and comprehensive diagram for your understanding, to illustrate the concept more effectively. At the very beginning, there is the Centralized and Collaborative Design Bureau, which serves as a hub for innovation and collaboration. Essentially, it can be said that this is some kind of provisional rental space that provides necessary and essential infrastructure. We do not plan to build anything within the framework of the project or create such facilities because this is not required for the project as a whole. We have an overarching objective that guides our efforts, but there is no specific well-defined task that needs to be accomplished. Therefore, the creation of the Design Bureau is primarily about strategically and thoughtfully bringing together all the essential and key participants, designers and engineers, under a single unified roof who will be directly involved in the development to foster collaboration and innovation. Subsequently, we will have the expansive and vast land area I previously mentioned, where two spacious and accommodating hangars will be located, which are essential for our operations. The land and the two hangars, I hope, are clearly visible. This is where the innovative and groundbreaking airships will be assembled and designed that will revolutionize transportation. And how will our airships be? We plan to start with two aerial transport vehicles that are designed for efficiency and capacity. One vehicle will have a maximum and optimal carrying capacity of two tons, which is vital and essential for our operations. The other will have a capacity of 10 tons. What does this mean? It is clear. One hangar for one vehicle and one hangar for the second vehicle. Why exactly these two aerial transport vehicles? Because in principle, these are potentially the most highly and significantly in-demand aerial transport vehicles that the current market is keenly awaiting. 
Two-ton airships are an excellent option for various research activities I mentioned, for transporting equipment, cameras, sensors, and more. Additionally, they are a great choice for tourist airships, where we can carry from 5 to 15 passengers, much like the Zeppelin company does. You can watch a relevant video about the airship I rode on, which was released last week. A rather interesting commercial option is the 10-ton airship, which is analogous to the MI-8 helicopter I already talked about today. This is the most popular type of helicopter in the world. In terms of the number of units produced, it is clear that it is in high demand for passenger transport, cargo transport, military tasks, and similar purposes. Therefore, this particular aircraft is currently the most sought after in the market and we are starting with it. Next, I mentioned that we will have our own production. Yes, specifically a production facility where we will manufacture various critical components ourselves. This will not involve the construction of a factory or anything like that. It will primarily be equipment and capabilities that we can essentially place anywhere. The main thing is that we can be independent in the important elements for us. Furthermore, a school is naturally planned, which I have already mentioned. Within this school, pilots, engineers, and those who will directly interact with these flying vehicles will be trained. So it certainly appears to be that I haven't overlooked or forgotten anything, right? Indeed, these are the assets that are intended and planned to be created within the project under the announced budget as per the current strategy. This is more than a feasible and realistic task on which one can already earn quite well in the market because these two aerial devices can already produce and generate a good profit. It is planned that each of the hangars will produce 20-30 airships annually per year. This is its production capacity, so to speak, in a manner of speaking and with the profit margin built into these aerial devices, we can already expect a good profit in the foreseeable future. When talking about such a business, the operating company plays a very important role, yes. This is because the operating company is responsible for managing and overseeing all aspects of the business operations, ensuring everything runs smoothly and efficiently. A company that will be able to do so is crucial for success. This means that not only can we sell the aerial devices directly to our customers, but we can also operate them ourselves, providing a comprehensive service. We can operate them for any purposes we need, whether it's for commercial, recreational or other uses, and sell our clients not just an aerial device, but specifically the cost of cargo transportation, which includes handling, logistics and delivery. Or we can sell specific options, for example, tourist flights, saying that, look, we can offer your tourists such scenic flights in your beautiful area, in Sochi or in Altai, for instance, providing a certain service. In other words, we offer a complete package that caters to the diverse needs of our clients, ensuring satisfaction and value. It is believed that a substantial and considerable amount of money is indeed actually located right here, in this very location, specifically in operations and activities. Let us carefully observe how it unfolds in reality because we plan to earn profits everywhere in every possible way, one way or another. Moreover, we aim to expand and develop from various side directions that are currently emerging and opening up for us. For instance, here we will write the word stratosphere. This refers to the very stratospheric devices that we successfully lifted last week. What are they needed for? This is to achieve several goals at once. The first goal. First of all, we are honing the technologies on such a device that will be used here for the communication system shells and everything similar. On the other hand, the stratosphere itself is quite interesting and such devices can even be illustrated to show that it is like a flying balloon, you could say. But in reality, it is much more serious because our goal is for such a flying balloon to be in the sky for at least a year, right? And work is currently underway on this. If we have such a balloon for a year, it can essentially do everything we talked about regarding the airship and carry various equipment to provide communication and internet access, especially in remote areas. 
And if we create a network of such stratospheric devices, we can provide, for example, the internet over entire regions. Yes, that's why we have such tasks. The first step was taken this Sunday. Look, there's a live broadcast. All the information was there as well. But, as I previously mentioned, this is just the initial first step. This is what is planned to be done with investors together with a budget of approximately $100,000. Of course, not all $100,000 will be spent exactly on what I described in these $100,000. There are certainly marketing expenses and conducting the same kind of elections as now certainly costs money. Therefore, this is the budget for the entire project. In one way or another, realizing this is our goal. Our task is to ensure that this company is already profitable on its own and undoubtedly interesting from an investment perspective at this particular stage. But this is still just the first step. Because once the company starts generating revenue, it will continue to develop and continue to grow. And there is already an understanding of where it will go. Specifically, regarding this part, the profit will come from the sale of airships. By the way, I forgot to mention another element, of course. Third party orders. Third party orders. Thanks to the creation of this platform, it is implied that the design bureau will be able to work not only on its own aerial devices, not only in the stratosphere, and not only on operations, but also to fulfill third-party orders for various clients. For example, conditionally, Roscosmos, which by the way is interested in such aerial devices, can turn to the company Nova. Yes, that is indeed the name of the company we are currently discussing. And he will say that for my tasks and responsibilities, I specifically and precisely need this specific kind of airship. It can differ from this one, from this airship, in various ways. It can either have a different and unique load capacity, or perhaps some very specific and unique features. Perhaps it should withstand extremely extreme temperatures, whether it be hot or cold, or even both simultaneously, or be protected from certain specific impacts. Therefore, he can order a specific variant for his very specific purposes and requirements from the Design and Development Bureau, and they can develop a similar airship for him and manufacture and produce it in series one after another in a continuous manner. So this is already a separate and distinct story that is also being laid out and developed. But right now, if we consider the absolute minimum scenario and situation, if we do not take into account or consider all of these factors, not the atmospheric device or equipment. We are solely talking about task number one, the primary task and objective, the production and subsequent sale of these aerial devices and equipment. We expect to achieve a profit of approximately 350 to $400 million per annum. Such a company or business entity could potentially earn that. So, in principle and in practice, an investment of around $100 million with such a profit margin is a fairly profitable and lucrative business. I think you understand and agree? Overall, in summary, having the opportunity and chance to conduct and operate such a business does not come around often, if ever. If we talk about the valuation of such a company, how much a company that generates this much money might be worth, I think you know examples where many companies are valued at any price and this is often not actually related to profit or anything else. There are unprofitable companies that are worth billions on the stock market while there are profitable companies that can be bought for just a few years of their revenue because on the stock market the valuation of a company is often more of an emotional factor. Do I believe or not believe that this company will be big and great? But if we calculate it simply by the usual scheme, as companies are typically valued, which is three years of profit, then the valuation of such a company will be no less than one billion. And it is precisely to this mark that we are currently striving as a goal to make this company a billion dollar one.
and this is more than possible given the appropriate revenues. At the same time, as I mentioned, we believe this is a minimum figure because we are not taking on external orders nor stratospheric devices and so on. Of course, having such money allows one to live well and enjoy life. But the goal is not just that. Certainly, the goal is not to create these devices and stop there. The goal is to build a truly great company and from there we can develop further with our own funds. And there is an understanding of how to do this. It is planned, additionally, to build two more slips, yes. Additionally, there will be two more airships. Furthermore, we will design, develop, and put into production four more devices, making a total of six in total. The devices will have capacities of approximately 2 tons, 10 tons, then 20, 40, and 200 tons, respectively. Another stratospheric device, meaning four more additional devices. Making devices that weigh 10 tons is not a problem. 20, 40 tons is also not an issue, but 200 tons will be a challenging task. However, as you can see, we are approaching it step by step. The most interesting part is the stratospheric airships that we plan to develop and are currently refining using stratospheric probes that are being launched. The company will essentially be able to do this with its own funds. Investments will not be required. The question is whether we will attract financing again when all this is over. Well, in general, it is normal to attract investments so that the business can develop faster and grow not only through its own profits. Therefore, we will see if we need to outpace competitors. We will need to increase our market share more quickly because right now there are other companies in Russia that are starting to engage in this in one way or another. There is a government directive on the development of the airship industry. So who knows how many state companies will be there in five years, let's say. Therefore, we might attract some investments there. Moreover, I do not rule out the possibility of using collective investment methods, but those will be separate projects and will involve separate companies. I am saying that no additional investments will be attracted here, thus diluting the share of existing investors. If additional investments are attracted, they will be for the creation of subsidiary companies. For example, there will be a subsidiary company that deals with stratospheric airships. Yes. And it will already attract investments. But you might have a question. Wait. So you will be creating subsidiary companies, and this company, it turns out, will not receive profits from them. Well, it's not quite like that. The subsidiary companies that will be created will still have Nova as the main founder. Accordingly, Nova will earn profits from all the created subsidiary companies. And since it will be earning, that means the investors who are investing in the creation of all this today will also earn. In other words, right now, together with you, we have the task of creating the main parent company that will own all the assets and all the companies that will be established in the future under the Nova brand. And this is probably the most pleasant part of it, right? That today there is an opportunity to join a company that will earn from all future directions. I hope this is clear to you. The foundation is quite simple. In fact, the plan is more than feasible. It is step by step. And we plan to accomplish all of this in three to five years. Everything primarily depends, of course, on the investments that will come into the project. Because unfortunately, at the moment, the project has everything. It just lacks the appropriate funding. And I am confident that it will come now. Our number one task is to launch the first airship already in a year. In just a year, the first airship will fly with the task of refining a number of technologies. Secondly, this will be the first device and it is planned to have automatic takeoff while the landing will focus on perfecting unmanned technologies. Additionally, 
many such things will be needed later for all the devices that the company will create in one way or another. Now let's say a few words about what is being offered directly to the investor within this scheme. Funds are necessary for the creation of the facilities I described. Those investors who are joining the project now will receive a share in the enterprise being established. That is, this is the company Nova that we were just talking about, which has a design bureau and everything else. And 49% is being given to investors today. So if you invest today, you receive a share directly in this company. Yes, depending on how much money you will invest. Well, 49% is allocated to all investors. As of today, these 49% belong to the company Solar Group, which is a financial company that provides funding for this project. And today, Solar Group is selling shares that you can purchase. This means you are buying shares in a group company that, in turn, owns a 49% stake in the company. Why is this done? It is done to legalize the funding attraction scheme because it was said to be rated within the framework of Russian law. We cannot organize such a scheme directly in the company, but to allow all investors to enter today, because this is a limited liability company, LLC. And here, in my opinion, there can be a maximum of 50 founders. Here, Solar Group can create the number of investors we need, which may be 50,000. By the end, the financing will be completed. Accordingly, investors will purchase shares, which will happen later. Once the financing is completed, the company Nova will be transformed into a joint stock company, and these 49% will no longer be shares of a limited liability company. They will become stocks. These shares will be received, and investors will be able to exchange their shares for stock. This means that the shares you acquire today can be exchanged for shares in the company Nova, allowing you to become full co-owners of the business we are discussing today. It's quite simple. As for what to do with the shares of such a company, I think you understand that the first option is the possibility to sell your stake in such a company for much less than you are acquiring it for today because today you are buying a stake in a business that is being created. Here, however, there will already be a business that not only exists, but is also making money. Of course, this is a completely different company, a completely different level of valuation for such a business. If you do not plan to sell your shares, you will be able to receive dividends, which is a portion of the profit that the company will earn and 50% of the profit that will be distributed as dividends. This will be distributed among the investors, and you will be able to receive passive income as a share of the profit generated by the aforementioned enterprise. Do you have the opportunity to invest in this company at the very early stage? Yes. And someone among you might say, well, why should I invest now? I'd rather invest when everything is ready. The thing is, our financing is divided into 20 stages. And at each stage, we solve specific tasks. And we are moving, so to speak, forward. Of course, being at the first stage, we are much closer to achieving our goals than, for example, when we reach the 10th stage, where we will likely take off as the first power. By then, all necessary contracts will have been signed, and at least two airships will have been designed and will be flying. And of course, the risks here are completely different. But this is where the concept of discount comes into play. The fact is that investing here is more advantageous in terms of investment conditions. Yes, the risk is higher, but for every dollar invested, you receive more of those shares, even though you bear greater risks. Everything balances out here. Everyone can choose when they want to invest. For example, 
in the first project, Sovelmash, we are currently at the 19th stage. And very soon we will move on to the 20th stage. So that project is almost completed. In this project, we are at this stage. Interestingly, we are not even at the first stage right now. At the very beginning, we are at the zero stage, or as we also call it, the start stage of financing. This is the start stage. It will last here for a while. We plan to complete the full packaging of the project, finalize all contracts and assemble the team in general, publicly, so to speak. We are preparing this project together with you. Only from the first stage will the full-fledged work begin, so to speak. At the same time, investing at the zero stage is twice as beneficial as at the first stage. For example, right now, for every dollar invested at the zero stage, you receive an average of 1,000 shares. When the first stage begins, for every dollar invested, you will receive 500 shares. This is how the discount works. Therefore, investing now is twice as beneficial as at the first stage. So if you like the project and are ready to take on the associated risks, you should definitely make the investment. Right now, you still have this opportunity at the zero stage. We have many stories, especially related to the first project, where people learned about it at the very beginning, but for some reason did not invest and then came back at the 10th stage, the 20th or the 15th stage saying, why did I take so long to think? But it is what it is, therefore to each their own. The risks at the beginning are compensated by very favorable investment conditions that will not be repeated at these stages. And as they say, those who were quick were quick. As of today, you can log into your personal account and see what investment packages are currently available for you to explore. Within the various existing packages, you can select the method by which you prefer to pay for the package, either as a one-time payment or through an installment plan. What volume of the investment package do you need? Yes, you can buy one share, two shares, or three shares, but that may not be very beneficial. I recommend purchasing investment packages in bulk, so-called investment packages. An investment package might cost, for instance, for example, $1,000, and in this investment package there will not be just one, two, or three shares but for example, an impressive total of 100,000 shares right away. So you get the necessary investment shares package at a huge discount, which is indeed very advantageous when bought in bulk. Everything is quite simple and straightforward. Log in to your personal account in advance, click the section, and you will see the entire range of investment packages available for investment. On average, we have an investment of $2,000 available in installments, allowing you to pay $100 each month, or as I believe, even less. An installment plan is not a loan. It is not something you take on credit. It simply means you agree to pay $1,000 over 10 months. You have the option to pay $100 a month. Why do this? Why not just save up $1,000 first? It's because you will take the package in installments. It will be under the investment conditions like the zero stage and you can finish paying for it when you reach, for instance, the fourth stage. If you had saved up $1,000 by the fourth stage and came in, you would have already purchased the investment package under different conditions. I hope this is clear. Uh, this is the project we are offering you. In fact, it is a unique and unparalleled opportunity. Those who are actively involved in investing know that good investment opportunities are indeed quite rare, especially in promising and emerging companies that have great potential, where for a small amount of money, typically between $1,000 and $2,000, you can actually acquire a share in a developing business. Not only is this potentially very profitable, 
but it is also interesting to observe with interest how our affairs will progress. At best, you are truly and genuinely helping a Russian company promote technological innovation, create technologies, and do this not somewhere else, but right here with us in this country. I believe this is highly relevant and significant today. For me, it is gratifying and satisfying to think that, thanks to my dedicated efforts, something in this country is gradually becoming better today than it was yesterday. You can also contribute by investing or helping with your other valuable abilities and connections. We often receive messages from people mentioning their involvement in various shell work activities or something else, and they assist with their extensive knowledge, expertise and resources, people, teams and agreements, and numerous other aspects. Of course, you can also actively promote and support this project as a dedicated partner and collaborator. We have a partnership program within which you can extend an invitation to your friends, colleagues and acquaintances to join, invest and receive valuable rewards and benefits for their participation and contributions. This is our form of marketing strategy and it has already been proven to be highly effective. It has allowed us to nearly fully finance and support our first project and I am confident that we will be able to successfully launch and manage more projects in the future utilizing this innovative marketing approach and strategy. Additionally, I would like to point out and emphasize the fact that if you are already an active partner who has participated enthusiastically in our first project, please note that if you want to continue to receive rewards from your existing structure and network for the second project, you need to successfully fulfill the comprehensive marketing plan. That is, if a person was registered in their personal account before August 7th and you want to receive a reward from them, you need to fulfill the marketing plan. If a person registered after August 7th, you receive rewards from both projects without any conditions. This means you can freely, so to speak, offer people both the first project and the second. However, if a person registered before August 7 and invested, for example, in the project, and you want to offer them the airship project as well, you need to fulfill the marketing plan and its conditions in the personal account. There are a few simple steps you need to take as a partner. Well, dear friends, I think we can indeed gradually conclude the main part. I'm waiting for your questions, if you have any, and I'm ready to answer them for now. I also remind you that it is very important to like, repost and show other forms of engagement. Please definitely send the link to this broadcast to your friends because the recording will be available at the same link and absolutely ensure that your friend might watch what we talked about today tomorrow. So I will quietly switch to vContacta for now and check the questions there first. For now, please write down your questions and thoughts. I will say a few more words to elaborate. Pay close attention to the investment conditions. We are currently at the preliminary initial starting stage and we have just begun this journey. While this stage is ongoing, there may still be some things that are unclear as not all materials are available and not everything is ready yet. But right now, you have the unique opportunity to receive the best investment conditions that will ever be available. A special discount of 1000. I have already mentioned that you receive an average of 1000 shares for every dollar. As soon as the first investment stage begins, you will receive only 500 shares for every dollar invested. Please note that this transition is very significant and abrupt. We are confident that those who have been with us for a long time will continue to invest. Therefore, we are offering the best conditions to support and thank such people for not being afraid to back us at the very beginning of the project. So I will also open YouTube.
And also a tiny piece of news. You know that we have news webinars on Thursdays. But just a few words. You probably saw that it has already been two months since we started our project. And just two months later, we launched our first aerial vehicle. This is the stratosphere. We launched a probe, which we broadcasted live. That was on Sunday. This Sunday, you can find the broadcast on our social media. It lasts for two and a half hours. There are discussions, explanations about what is happening and the flight itself. I was entrusted with releasing this probe into the sky. Yes, it was a very, very great honor for me. So, as they say, it was not in vain that I came. It was not in vain that they waited for me because we were in the second group and were slightly delayed for the actual launch. Just a bit more patience and we will achieve even greater things. Why was this done? I mentioned it today as well. This is one of the parallel business directions that the company in the stratosphere will focus on regarding aerial vehicles. These are vehicles that can remain in the atmosphere for years and serve as a kind of satellite, providing internet connectivity, conducting various reconnaissance and engaging in scientific activities. There is already a significant demand for these vehicles. We know where to sell them and how to profit from this. Therefore, what is most important is that the team of specialists we have gathered has always been involved in this. It is a side direction that has funding. But in any case, it is the same direction, faster than airships. Yes, already you see, two months have passed and the aerial vehicle has already been launched. It will allow us to refine the technologies that we will use directly in the airships themselves. So, the launch went well, it was successful, I hope you have been following it. Perhaps this Thursday we will tell you more in detail but we might postpone it for some other topic because right now our specialists are studying the data collected from all the sensors to provide you with not just a simple report of well, it took off, everything was good, everything worked but to share the details, the numbers of what we managed to achieve. So very soon this information will also be available and I want to extend my heartfelt congratulations to you because we have launched our first aerial vehicle. This is a truly significant achievement. I am sure that few of you expected that we would launch the first vehicle just two months later. To be honest, I did not expect it myself. For me, it was also a significant revelation that we would be actively engaged in this and that it would happen so incredibly quickly. Therefore, a big thank you to our team of engineers and specialists for the rapid development of our project. So, well, let me move on to the questions. I'll start with the questions from vcontactee. So, we are basically waiting for the flight analysis where the probe's shell landed. How is the communication in the stratosphere? But basically, I just mentioned that everything is fine. Yes, the first probe was launched and everything went successfully. It fell. Did the shell fall later or did the equipment fall in the forest? I think it took a couple of hours to search through the forest for that shell and it was already night. Well, it wasn't winter, but it was kind of cold. So it was quite fun. In any case, I already mentioned that to have a more substantive conversation, we will first wait for information from the specialists who are calculating the results, and then we will tell you everything. 2,000 investors in airships. Why are there so few? A survey could determine who among the investors of Sovelmash will invest in airships and who will not. Who will be Spet Solmash and who will participate in all projects? Sergey. Well, first of all, it's not 2,000. It's already more than that, yes. And secondly, who told you that this is little? The question is, what are you comparing it to? I mean, if you compare it to how the Duyunov's engines project started, then this is a lot. Our pace is currently about 10 times faster than it was there. It's just that not everything is moving that quickly. This needs to be understood. 
We are at the initial stage now with little information. In principle, we are trying not to push our audience too hard, as it's said nowadays. That is, we are not being aggressive, we are not selling anything to anyone. Those who know, know. Those who don't, don't know yet. One way or another, we will, of course, keep our audience informed. And there will undoubtedly be more investors. And now regarding investors in general, you need to understand how investing in such projects works. They do not come in steadily every month. Usually there is a lull. It just goes on and on in a consistent manner. Then, when various promotions and events occur, and most importantly, when there is a change of stage, that's when people rush to invest heavily. You see, I know a huge number of people who told me they like the project, it's great, and that they will invest. You ask them, well, have you invested yet? They say, no. Why? Well, they just haven't gotten around to it. You understand, right? I invest. But a person thinks, well, what about today, tomorrow, or the day after tomorrow? Why should I rush to take an installment plan right now? That's why there is this technique, let's say, marketing, a method combined with the stages of implementation. We have what is called a discount, and it specifically encourages people to stop waiting and start acting. Therefore, when we announce a change in stage, we might just gain another 2,000 people in a month. It always works that way. Therefore, there are quite a few investors who are more than sufficient to finance the project now, especially considering that we are not aggressively promoting the project at this time. We are simply and carefully, yet steadily, gradually introducing people to it, ensuring they understand its full potential and benefits. And as I mentioned earlier, the change of stages will reveal everything in due course, providing clarity and insight into the project's progress and future prospects. What are your impressions of the launch of the Northern Apparatus? asks Alexander. Impressions? Well, what positive impressions? It's quite interesting. Yes, it was indeed unusual for me to have so many people to engage with interestingly. It's always absolutely fascinating to talk to smart people. When you know that standing on every square meter, they discuss topics that make your own mind start to boil. And it is of course very interesting when all these people gather in one place. Plus, it's just an interesting leisure time. Let's say that being in nature is always a pleasant way to spend time. Additionally, this venue where all this is happening is, as I understand, not far from the tourist route with various restaurants, cafes and so on. There are also little churches and such truly authentic wooden houses. Very charming. The lake is large. And of course, we didn't have time to relax or do anything else at the lake, so to speak, but it was still quite interesting. It was a new experience for me as well, a pleasant place with pleasant people. And the most important thing is that everything went according to plan, which you can generally see for yourself in the live broadcast. Therefore, I really liked it very much. I will try to come to the next launch as well. So, in the team, there is indeed Ivan Borisovich Chaika, the one who set the record for flight time in Russia and who trained the airship pilots. So, Vitali, but I just don't know everyone by their last names. We have a considerable number of people here. But I don't know if I have personally communicated with Ivan Borisovich. It might be better to address the question to Fedor. What is the current participation? The person you named has, as you mentioned. Pavel, why are you talking about the casino on the airship? Is it really a good business? Irina. Of course, a casino. There's nothing good about a casino. I said that to, let's say, provide more understanding that there can be the most unusual options. Yes, it's clear that a casino by itself is, well, at least we definitely won't be engaging in that. But as an example. Basically, it's entertaining, let's say, but no more than that, of course. We do not plan to create a casino. 
will all 49% of the group's shares be distributed to investors or will there be some portion left? Who will own 50% of the shares in the company Nova? What amount will the owners of 50% of the investments contribute to the new project? Igor, look, yes. These 49% of the group will be fully and completely distributed among the investors. So, buying for oneself does not constitute anything here. It's 49% for all investors in total. As for this share, 51% remains. It stays with the management, the designers and other essential people who will be involved in the process of promoting and implementing this project and other related activities. In principle, everything is exactly the same as in the Sovelmash project. If you are involved, as you may already know, you should know about how much money these developers will contribute, right? I understand that this is about their significant share and involvement. Well, look, these people have contributed some substantial money in any case because the project has been in preparation for many years, and a lot has been done over the years. But of course, this cannot be compared to the considerable hundred million that the investors are bringing in. Here, it's like in a classic business scheme where investors meet entrepreneurs and the entrepreneurial entrepreneur does not necessarily have to bring financial backing, right? Because the financial backing is with the investor. As you can see in this scenario, it is evident that the money is from the investors. An entrepreneur must do business because they have the expertise and skill and a team. In this case, there are talented engineers, there are their innovative brains, yes, who can implement the project. In a capitalist world, it is impossible to do anything without financial resources. That is why there are so many investment funds, various numerous methods of attracting financing, complex legal shell schemes and so on. Because there are people who can really do groundbreaking things, who can create innovative technologies, create businesses. But that does not mean that these people should already have a substantial $100,000 in their pockets. It's all very straightforward and simple. At the same time, there are people who have already made their fortune, who have financial resources for some reason, or, as in our case, there are a large number of people who have $1,000 that they are ready to invest. And these people, their goal is not to engage in business, you understand? Because one could say to an investor or all investors, what will you do for the business? Well, what? Just give financial resources and that's it. But just giving financial resources does nothing. You can't do that. It's unfair. One could reason like that, yes, but here it's such a deal, for instance. You see, some people just provide money and actually do nothing. Then, for the rest of their lives, in case of success, they earn money and are set for life. And these are working, excuse me, it has been years first this, then that. And this is their contribution to this common cause. So, it turns out to be a big business. Yes, and this is a great connection. Yes, a great connection. When two people meet, two companies, or let's say two entities, right? One has one thing, and the other has another. And when they put these together, it results in a wonderful outcome because it's impossible to know everything in the world, right? You can't be an expert in everything. Then here, it's the same. Each contributes based on what they specifically have. So, hello. How did the probe selection go on Sunday? Was there a video recording of how it all happened? I already talked about it today. I will say again that everything went well for us. There was, of course, indeed a recording. There were a bunch of cameras on this call and all sorts of other equipment. We will definitely, absolutely, indeed publish all of this and you will see it all. Is it possible to use the envelopes of airships as a grotesquely historical screen for advertising purposes and sell ads like billboards on city streets? Alexander, yes, that is indeed possible. By the way, I think the last time, not so long ago, I remember hearing a similar suggestion, if I am not mistaken, 
from Vadim Ivanovich Zubkevich, who is a well-known expert in this field. He was just talking about how incredibly cool it would be to place a kind of interactive screen or something similar on the airship so that it could be easily changed, not just a fixed inscription that you absolutely cannot erase, but something that could be constantly updated and modified as needed. So yes, achieving this goal is indeed possible. It's not just a simple task, but rather a compelling promotional story that has the potential to captivate audiences. The idea is to create something that stands out and draws attention. Therefore, it's quite possible that we will Subsequently, data about the owners will be published when organizing the joint stock company. This group of shareholders holds 51%. This information will be published immediately. Moreover, it cannot be hidden because despite the companies being LLCs, there are plenty of resources in Russia that are legal and accessible, usually serving to verify the counterparties you work with. You can obtain all data on any LLC, including profits, the number of employees, and the composition of the founders. Therefore, this information is already open. There is no point in looking at it yet, as not all co-founders have been established, but this can be done soon. And of course, there will be no secrets here, especially from investors. So, I understand that I see questions. As of now, there haven't been any dividends from uh, launches like this. Starting from 2025, it seems that dividends will only be paid the year after the profit is calculated. So, potentially, maybe the question wasn't meant for me. And how many devices are planned to be made within the project? Will these funds be approximately sufficient if there is inflation? Well, you see, it is specifically to protect against inflation. We are often asked about this. Our project price is announced in dollars because one way or another the dollar still remains, as of today, a global currency, currently. It is much more convenient and reliable to rely on it than on the ruble, such as because of inflation and other economic factors. Therefore, we are focusing specifically on the dollar. Accordingly, the inflation rate of the dollar is not nearly as high as that of the ruble. And even if there are some fluctuations, generally speaking in general, it should not be particularly significant for us in terms of overall impact. In any case, regarding the number of apparatuses, as I mentioned as previously stated, a total of two commercial apparatuses are planned to be produced. If we talk about intermediate apparatuses, that is, various testing options, in terms of quantity there could potentially be several dozen units even. And Fedor mentioned that for various demonstrations to refine any technology, for instance as an example, there could be for example a total of five units made Did they find the balloon that was launched on Sunday, or did it not work out? Of course they found it. Everything worked out. Everything is fine. The operating company will be separate, or will be included in Nova? Well then indeed, perhaps physically, it will most probably likely be a different legal entity, right? For the proper management of it, but Nova will own it meaning Nova will own everything that will be created within the framework of the project, in essence, as a result. So, I'm looking at the questions. Did I understand correctly that the net profit is $250,000 a year? 
Yes. What I'm saying is net profit just, I didn't say 250 million, but yes. Please provide the link to the Russian government's directive on the development of airships that you mentioned. I don't have the documents at hand. If there is this link, I wonder where to find it. By the way, can you join the Telegram channel where you can communicate, including with me, with Fedor Konstantinov? All these links can be shared. You can join the Telegram chat for next generation airships and ask your question there. I think other investors, partners, or someone from us will provide you with all similar links. I don't have that link at hand. The launch of airships in Russia comes directly from the president. Victor, well, I don't know who exactly. I don't remember who specifically wrote the order, but in any case, yes, indeed, our government is certainly interested in the development of airships. One billion for 1,000 investors is a significant amount of money, but one billion for 50,000 investors is not a substantial amount of money. Well, look, the question is what a substantial amount of money means to you. If a few million dollars are not a substantial amount of money for you, I can only be happy for you. But in principle, it definitely depends on several factors. Well, it shouldn't be calculated from that, but rather from how much you specifically invested and how much you can specifically earn and how much, let's say, you can potentially increase your investment. It's clear that someone will earn a little in absolute terms. They will earn, I don't know, maybe $3,000, but they invested $500. Well, someone who invested $100,000 will clearly earn millions. And unfortunately, to earn a lot of money, you need even more money. Yes, you have to find it somewhere. On the other hand, such projects, right? They, one way or another, even with a small capital, allow for quite solid and impressive returns. And this already formed capital that you can get in such a project already has those several million rubles. For example, you can already invest in more conservative instruments like purchasing real estate or stocks and similar things. Because when you have 10, 50, 100,000 R, well, investing in stocks is certainly possible, but it seems to have little significant meaning. So, you need an up-to-date wind map. How will you create it? Is it already being made? As far as I know, yes, colleagues are working on it. But I can't say anything about the results yet. By the way, we also filmed an interview today with Milan, who is working on the control system development. Yes, we will talk about what kind of control system is being outlined for our apparatus, what technologies will be used, and who will be making them. I hope that this video will be released next week, maybe today, or tomorrow. Let's share a little bit more of a segment of footage that we filmed there at the end of last week to give you a preliminary introduction to the city of Milan, Italy. If I buy a share in dollars and he owns 40% in both companies, then I immediately become a joint owner of both and Masha, right? Not quite. Because from a legal standpoint, you are discussing under a separate and distinct agreement. Accordingly, the relationships of the groups are different and you have varied and distinct projects. You sign either one or the other. Of course, one can sign both agreements, but in any case, you are buying shares that were issued for different projects, 
So naturally, if you buy shares of Solar Group, it doesn't mean that you are immediately investing in both projects. Solar Group is a company that focuses on innovative energy solutions and has multiple projects under its umbrella, each with its own unique potential and risks. Investing $1,000 in airships, for instance, does not secure you for the rest of your life. Airships, while promising in terms of technology and environmental impact, still face market challenges and uncertainties. The same goes for Sovelmash, another project under Solar Group that deals with advanced machinery and engineering solutions. Well, if you think so, tell me where one can invest to ensure financial security for the rest of their life. I'm curious about what such funding methods exist. What do you know that even here seems insufficient to you, and you believe that this won't secure you for life? Financial security is a complex and often elusive goal, and many people wonder if there truly is a foolproof method to achieve it. Well, let me tell you this. The world of investments is full of opportunities and risks, and it's important to stay informed and cautious. Yes, if you invest $10 in any investment tool, you won't be able to secure yourself for a lifetime. That's true. By the way, regarding the reference, which is an important aspect of this discussion. For this particular contract, which involves several intricate details, the government issued a specific order concerning the airships, and Alexander, who is known for his expertise in this field, provided, let us say, a significant fragment of the text that is available on the social media platform V Contacte. So, I don't see the question anymore. I don't know. I can look for another question. Let me take a quick look. We also see it now on that platform, so we don't forget about it. In any case, of course, we still expect friends that anything can happen on YouTube. So if you are following us, make sure to subscribe on a pen. Subscribe on V Contacte. Please make sure to follow us on V Contacte for the latest updates and news. There so that he doesn't miss anything. News. Well, our broadcast apparently didn't go on. We apologize for any inconvenience caused by the broadcast issue. So, how is it? I wrote that the broadcast has not started yet. So, well, as you know, it means that today, judging by everything that has been observed, you were absent at all, but we answered the main questions. I watched everything on Vcontacte, as well as YouTube and other social media platforms. Please don't forget to like and share, and remember that this is critically important for the project to develop actively. Well then, see you on Thursday at our next webinar, where we will definitely discuss the latest and most exciting news about the upcoming Next Generation Airship project and the company Nova. Thank you all very much, and see you at the very next broadcast.